Today is graduation day. I wonder why that is. Right now, there's a lot of graduates going on, right? We just heard about that this morning in our prayer time. We've got everybody from in this, um, right now, we've got Alan graduating eighth grade. We got David graduating um, a high school. We got Heather just graduated four years of college. Just a lot going on there. So graduation day, what does that have to do with church, with our relationship with God. Is there any graduation coming? Is there a bigger graduation that's going to happen? Can you picture something like that? The second coming. It's like a graduation. It's coming, right? And this is probably of all the studies and all of what you stri strive for your entire life, the importance and gravity of this graduation, is it higher than just about anything else? Higher. Yes. And uh, thankful Jesus has done the work for us. It's a beautiful opportunity. I want to take you into um, uh, some thoughts on this. Um, uh, last evening, just last... Uh, Last evening at 7 o'clock, David had um, his senior class uh, awards and recognition. And it was pretty neat going there and seeing all of the people that got some awards and achieved some things that were just pretty, pretty neat. And the teachers and, and uh, others would get up and they'd talk about each student as they'd, they'd uh, give them an award. And... There are some kids that kind of went way above and beyond, right? Even uh, talking about um, uh, in academic excellence, just how do, you, how do you obtain academic excellence? Is that just by showing up? No. You go a little above and beyond. You study hard. You just, you got to give it more than just a little. And uh, so then they even gave awards for athletic excellence. So do you obtain an athletic excellence award for sitting around? No. You got to work at it. You got to do a lot of exercising. You got to get off the bench. You got to get off the couch. You got you to get out there and go, go, go. And uh, then there was ones for community service. Wow. Young people that just excelled in going out and doing lots of community service, just helping people. And, you know, hopefully the goal of that is not to just do it because you have to but because you want to. You want to give back. God has blessed you and me with all kinds of talents and abilities, right? And what does he give it to us for? To just hoard to ourselves? To glorify him. And how do we glorify him? By being his hands and feet, right? And getting out there and going and doing and helping people. Jesus, he actually went up there prepare a place for us, but he's still wanting to be very active on this earth through us. And uh, so there was awards talking about for uh, uh, students that were assisting other students. Hmm. So even as they're going through school, they're helping other students. What kind of correlation can you think of in the church for that? As we're going through this whole life, this Christian life, we have such an opportunity to actually help each other along the way. Is there any perfect students? Are there any perfect people in the church? No. But we want to help each other right along the way. It's just a beautiful opportunity we have. And uh, then they even gave out some awards and stuff and talked about 
even just the attitude of the students. One teacher started talking about this one student and how the student went so above and beyond and in one instance, specifically, she remembered and recalled how she was having kind of a really rough day. And at that moment, that student came up to her and said, I appreciate you. And as she was telling this, she was choking back tears. And when she called that student forward to get that award, whatever it was, and that was just part of what that person, I mean, a side benefit of what that person was getting the award for, but the student gave her a big hug. And instead of all the other students, then after getting the award, they would uh, then stand beside the pulpit and, and a smile, most behind masks, some took them off, and got their picture taken. That student couldn't even stand there. And they were trying to at first, oh, it, and he just walked on up. And as they walked up, wiping his eyes. It's pretty neat how much we have an opportunity to help people, even in just words, right? How many times do we thank people in the church for what they're doing? How many times do we thank people outside of church for what they're doing? And be this little light that God wants us to be in this dark world. And uh, I just think about this whole graduation theme. And then this coming Friday is uh, high school graduation for David. And, and we just got, went through Heather's. And, and uh, Alan, I don't know when his is or was. This Thursday night? This Thursday night at Goebbels Junior Academy? Oh, next Thursday. Not, oh, this last Thursday night. Oh, it was. Okay, so you can't come to it anymore because it's in the past. But uh, yeah, praise God for that graduation of his. And you know, as I was preparing for the sermon, God put on my heart a movie clip. I want to show you this movie clip right now. And this movie clip is from a movie called Fireproof. And you're going to wonder, what does a marriage movie, that this is about marriage, have to do with graduation day? Well, we're going to tie that in. Let's watch this. You got to get the audio going there. How many of you have watched Fireproof? If you haven't, I definitely highly encourage you to watch this movie. It's a great movie. It has some incredible takeaways for just relationships in general, not just um, uh, marriage, just in general. And it's still difficult. Every day Maybe has me adding a new concept to the way I treat her. For example? Well, here. Day 16 was about praying for her. I kind of skipped that one. Day 17 is about listening to her. 18 is about studying her again. Studying her? Yeah, here. When a man is trying to win the heart of a woman, he studies her. He learns her likes, dislikes, habits, and hobbies. But after he wins her heart, and marries her, he often stops learning about her. If the amount he studied her before marriage was equal to a high school degree, he should continue to learn about her until he gains a college degree, a master's degree, and ultimately a doctorate degree. It is a lifelong journey that draws his heart ever closer to hers. It's a pretty good concept. I never thought about it like that. So do you study Tina? Yeah, but I don't think I got my college degree on her yet. So tell me a little bit more about the studying her. Yeah, I'm supposed to uh, make her a candlelight dinner and then ask her a whole list of questions. My advice is go all out. Meaning? Don't go cheap. 
If you don't cook, get it from a good restaurant. Take it home, use your best dishes, glasses, music, everything. Make it a memorable date. So there you are. The concept of studying, in this case, his, he's having troubles with his marriage, and so studying his wife, studying her, and just leading up to marriage was equated to a high school degree, a high school graduate. And then, once you get married, you go on to college learning, right, about her. And you learn and you continue to study and study her. And then you go on and you keep studying. Once you get your college degree, you go for your what? Your master's and then your what? Your doctorate degree. Wow. And you keep studying. Well, wait a minute now. Let's turn this around. We're talking about a graduate, a graduate day about Jesus' second coming coming here, right? This is where we're going. We've got a graduation day that's coming that is absolutely phenomenal, and it's life-changing, and it's forever, and you are going to never want to miss this graduation day. But how do we get there? We need to have a relationship with Jesus, right? And how do we maintain? So when we, when we first learn about Jesus, we learn about him, and for some reason, somehow, God showed himself to you, and Jesus came into your life somehow, and that's why you're here. And so somehow, and some of you actually went through that relationship period and you got to the point where you wanted to dedicate your life to him. And you end up doing that even in a representing way of you went and even got baptized. I'd like to think of that as you graduated high school so to speak, right? In your relationship with Jesus. You graduated high school. You, you, you got baptized. You went through studies and studies and you learned about Jesus. You learned about a relationship with Jesus and then you got to the point where you said, I'm all in. I am all in. He's my savior. He's my creator. And I just want to surrender my life to him. And you died to self in that watery grave. And then you came up a new person in Christ with him living through his Holy Spirit in you. And then a lot of times, it's like as if the old record player, remember, I don't know if you remember the record player and he's going around and the needle and it's playing the music and all of a sudden the record stops. <laughs> so many times. Once we get baptized, it's like the record stops. And we just stop learning about Jesus. We stop growing a relationship with Jesus. Why do I need to learn anymore? I already got it in there. I know it. I know it all. So, yeah, I don't need to study him anymore. And what happens to our relationship with Jesus when we stop studying about him and spending time with him? Just like any relationship, it's probably going to go down. So now once we get to baptism, our opportunity is to apply those same principles of actually going into our college education on Jesus and a relationship with him. And we continue to study and study the opportunity. I know um, some of you, once you graduate to high school, you're like, like David. He's like, oh, man, now what? And oh, man. And, and Heather, last year, it's like, oh, college? And, and not everybody needs to go to college. 
There are trades that need people like crazy. Seth is becoming an incredible electrician, learning a trade, and it's awesome. There is great need for those and college students. But no matter what path you take, whether you go to college or you go into a trade, here's Seth in a trade. He's got, isn't it, how many years? Five years of training to become an electrician. Wow. And then there's two-year degrees in college. There's four-year degrees. There's, you can keep on going. Shoo. Um, uh, like Conlon's uh, son-in-law, going to become a doctor and all this stuff. Wow. I mean, huge. How many? 13. Around 13 years. Wow. So, so you get through high school, and then you go into the college education or training in a trade, and you keep learning and keep learning. And then once you get your education and you go into your job, a lot of times there is something else that your job continues to want you to keep educated. And what's that called? Continuing education, right? And so Mindy, like, uh, as I know, physical therapy, I mean, she continues to every year. She has to do continuing ed and get, take classes and stuff. Why? Because you want to keep up to date on things, right? And keep learning. Wow. You got Joel. This guy's uh, graduated, but boy, he's gone through two certificates, I think, now, ish. And now he's on to a third humongous certificate that's supposed to take about how many hours of uh, studying? Uh, around 250 to 300 hours of studying for this humongous exam, test. Really? Can you just picture that? Translate that over time. The guy is giving up so much of his life to studying, right? Why? Because that's what God has called him to do, to an education and to his job, and so that he can do it excellent. And to help in that case, help people with their finances. And he definitely doesn't want to miss or mess up on their finances. And now we've got an opportunity in our Christian lives to sharpen our skills. Do you know everything? How many of you guys know everything about the Bible? Raise your hands. Learn something. I heard somebody say, learn something new every time you read it. Absolutely. There is so much in here, and this is just the basic instructions before leaving earth. <laughs> so once we get to heaven, our education down here is going to continue up there for a thousand years, and then down onto this earth, we're going to continue throughout eternity learning about Jesus and his creations and everything. Our education, not to make you feel overwhelmed, but that's exciting. And it's going to be awesome. But this has got to be, prob I would suggest, the most important study to study. All the rest, it can just go away if we don't get this. Like H Hannah read for us, our scripture um, let's go there again. Let's go to Matthew 16. Let's open your Bibles. Matthew 16. We're going to go to 24. Matthew 16. There it is in verse 24. It says, Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow who? Jesus. The world is following all kinds of people, right? Following, you get people on, on your phone and on and on. You watch a YouTube, it's follow me and 
Facebook, follow me and Twitter and all these things. Follow, 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 follow all these people. Wow. Instagram, follow, follow. I'm following 50 people or whatever. I'm not following anybody personally, but I don't have Twitter, Instagram, or any Facebook or anything. But I'm not down in anybody that does. But wow, how much attention span can you have? following, following, following all these people and their lives and everything. And how much time is spent following all of this? How much time are we spending following Jesus? This is important stuff. Because he goes on to say, verse 25, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Verse 26 says, For what is a man profited if, if he shall graduate high school and go to a college degree and get that and, and, uh, and go and get a great job and, and get a whole bunch of money and and then back to the verse, gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. That's the graduation day. I got goosebumps. I don't know about you, but when I read that last verse, I got goosebumps thinking about this. That's graduation day. It's coming. And I just really, really want to challenge all of you, of all the people to click and like, and all of the people to click and follow, Make sure Jesus is at the top of that list. I want to challenge us. In the morning, Jesus showed us an example. In the morning, early in the morning, his habit was to go spend time with his Father. I want to challenge us. In the morning, let's spend time with him. Let's really commit to learning, getting our education, continuing our education in our Savior Jesus, continuing that relationship with him so that in that last day, the graduation day, we can go to the graduation and we can hear the award, well done, Thou faithful servant. That's what I'm looking forward to. That's what I long for, for each one of us. And then Jesus asks us, as we're going through our education, part of our education is community service. It's helping others with their education. Don't just keep your education to yourself. Graduation day is coming for everybody you meet, online, in person, even the casual bystander, the person at the checkout counter. Graduation day is coming. We have a responsibility, an opportunity to share Jesus with everybody we come in contact with. It's amazing how many opportunities we get to do that. I've got my little perpetual prayer books that uh, continue to grow. And just this week, I added quite a few more people. As God, in my education, as I'm going through my education, I'm still learning about Jesus. I'm still learning a relationship with Jesus myself. I'm still learning how to pray myself and sure enough had so many people that God put in my life even yesterday morning 
as I'm going through my day because I'm studying, I'm praying, and I'm letting God, in, inviting him into my life every day, letting him lead me, all of a sudden, I get impressed. To, it's cold out. I'm out of wood. Order some wood. Huh. So I get impressed to go on Craigslist. And I went on Craigslist. I found two different ones. I emailed one. I text one. The guy texted me back. Long story shortened, he came out, delivered the wood. And then David comes in and says, hey, Dad, you got to go talk to that guy. He's so much like you. I'm like, really? He's so much like me, huh? He goes, yeah, oh, yeah, he's, he's so much like you. Talking about this, that, and the other thing, end time, end time events and all this stuff. And Wow, praise God. So I went out there, and I get talking to him, and just really neat. I'm looking forward to you guys hopefully meeting him. His name is Dan, really cool guy. He lives just south of here on 6th Street, turns out. And uh, he's been studying and studying in his education about God. And in his studies, he's learned about the Sabbath. In his studies, he learned about Bible prophecy. He's so in alignment already with God's truths. And then I end up praying with him. And he said, I want to pray with you too. I said, that'd be great. So I put my hand on him. I, I pray with him. And then he prays a prayer. And he said, Lord, I want to thank you for answering my prayer just yesterday. Just yesterday, I asked you, why has nobody contacted me about firewood off of Craigslist? Please help somebody to contact me. I don't know the story behind that. I don't know anything else. I don't. But thank you, Lord, for this order. In our education, we have an opportunity to invite Christ daily into our lives, study about him, learn more about him. And by beholding, we become what? Changed. What are you beholding? All your likes and clicks and followings and all this stuff? How is that changing you? Jesus wants to come into our life and change us. And then, in our education with him, as we grow, all of a sudden, he can guide and direct us to extra work, helping people learn also about him. And the graduation day, that means everything. Because without this, nothing matters. Why not challenge us? Seek Jesus with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will guide and direct your path all the way to graduation day. Let's pray. Heavenly Father.